Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, applying a SharePoint IT strategy and talk about why it's important and how to actually do this. So the agenda is a bit of a brief history of this presentation, IT strategies in general, why you need to do it, strategy tools, strategy musts, and signs that it's all going wrong. So before we begin, just a very big thank you uh, to the folks at um, uh, Arcovia uh, for letting me speak uh, about the subject. It, we were, I'm really like, committed that you guys get a lot of value from this, and if you do have questions, feel free to interrupt me, and I'll either answer them there and then, or I'll take a note and I'll answer them at the end of the presentation. So very quickly about Soho Dragon, you know, we're a Microsoft SharePoint partner. We work with New York's largest, the most profitable companies, as well as the small ones. Uh, we also, these are like the majority of businesses, the small teams, startups, people trying to take on the world. Basically, we call this group the Fortune 5 million. So basically, um, this is my third SharePoint book. So the first one I wrote was with um, with Mike McCabe, and the history behind this is that we wrote the, I wrote this book, and a lot of people were responding to the publisher and saying, this is great, but we don't actually know how to actually get started. And, and, and I, like a lot of Microsoft partners, said, oh, you need to look at the Microsoft website, you need to go to SharePoint Saturdays, and the people were going to these uh, events, but it's like felt, well, look, this is too deep dive, heavy duty stuff. What we actually really need, we need to need some kind of like a roadmap, a strategy, or some way where a business where a business manager can take a document or take a information to the CFO and get them to sign off on this information. And so that's where really this SharePoint book came about of a SharePoint strategy, and that's how this presentation came about. So Microsoft SharePoint Business Performance Enhancement was my first book. I wrote this book on the workflows. And then this is the book that actually came out today. So a couple of SharePoint statistics is that you'll hear this from Microsoft. They'll say that SharePoint's the fastest growing product in history. Microsoft's adding 20,000 users per day, every day, for the last five years. So by the time I've actually finished speaking, that's going to be about 2,000 people. It's actually added to SharePoint. And there's about 65,000 customers who have purchased SharePoint. So these are the statistics you will hear from Microsoft, but what you don't often hear is statistics from a research firm like AIIM, and they discovered that half of all SharePoint implementations proceed without a clear business case, which shows a lack of direction from the start. So it's a classic case of IT having a server in the, in, in the corner looking at SharePoint and then trying to figure out how to actually work within the organization. Only 22% of organizations provide users with guidance on corporate classification and use of content types, columns, i.e. lack of end user training. So basically, end users are not going to see the value of SharePoint unless they actually have any guidance, which is why sometimes users do actually complain that SharePoint, I know it can do so much more, but we haven't figured out what to do. That's a very familiar conversation. Okay. And a third of organizations have no plans of how to use SharePoint, while one, even though they've deployed it and spent the money on this, while a quarter of organizations say it's IT that's driving with no input from the information management professionals. So looking at these statistics, these statistics are actually worse than the actual, I'm saying, because at least companies are recognized what they're not doing. What's also not being shown is that companies don't recognize that they're actually not doing this stuff. So if we can actually just pick up on a few of the points in this presentation, then you actually, um, you've got a greater chance of actually getting uh, much more user adoption within an organization. And at the end of the day, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of companies are using SharePoint in a way it's basically a fancier, more ex extensive set of share drives of an, you know, a, an enterprise content management system, which is where you can find assets. And as we all know, SharePoint provides a lot more than that. So basically, listening and acting on this presentation could be a very good smart career move to really make a big impact in an organization. So how to successfully implement a collaboration platform of a SharePoint strategy. So an IT strategy in general 
you know, it's a plan to achieve certain goal, got results. It's a journaling, which you redefine quarterly. It's not a PowerPoint presentation to the business, and then we start like figure out what the business does, and we just do it. Okay, it's something which is communicated across the organisation. Everyone will say, well, SharePoint's like the Swiss Army knife of technology. It can do a lot of things. It can touch every business unit. That's great, but unless it's communicated um, to the organisation, to the stakeholders, the other divisions and departments, you're never really going to get the message across. Okay, what an IT strategy is not, it's not a single meeting with a series of PowerPoint slides. Okay, it's not technical documentation. Generally, business users do not want to see technical documentation. They, they just want to see the value. Okay. Now, why is that a challenge with SharePoint? Firstly, with SharePoint, it, the business impact is difficult to define. If you're implementing a CRM system, you know what you're doing. You know what the end result is. You know it's a pipeline. You know we're tracking accounts. Um, we know who, who the end users are, who are generally sales folks. What SharePoint is a challenge to define, where SharePoint is a challenge to define is, well, well, because it touches so many people within the organization okay, in so many different ways, it can be, you know, it's almost like, well, where exactly does it start? Where does it stop? And also, you've probably got other systems which are actually be doing some kind of a similar process already. Now, is SharePoint complementing that or is it replacing? The classic example is the network drive. Is the organization replacing the network drive or is it complementing it? And it's also about adoption. It's not rather than under budget and, and delivery. Quite often, um, IT, they're really focused on let's just get the project delivered on budget and on time. And what is missing is actually the, the whole thing about adoption. There's no value in bringing SharePoint into an organization if it's kind of like barely used, it's a low-touch solution. Um, it, it really has to be mapped onto certain business processes which can make a difference. And the golden rule, if, it's, if it provides value, then it's actually a good. It, it, that, that's where you should review SharePoint. Someone's asking me a question, and that's Jamie asking, telling people who have just joined. So for those who just want to feel free to use the chat to ask questions. <laughs> Sorry Ideally, about that. I was just letting them know. That's all right. That, that's all right. So obviously with that IT strategy, just like understand, well, where is it going to be delivered in within the organization? The key thing is actually, you know, the high-level capabilities of, the pro of a product. You don't necessarily need to know the SharePoint API, but you do want to know, well, what it can do in terms of document management, uh, business processes, BI, integrating into your existing technology stack. Um, that's actually key. Okay. Now, and a strategy could also be considered as just proactively watching and perhaps making half it hearted connections to see what other departments are doing. So if your department is thinking about having SharePoint, your strategy could be for the next three months to say, look, we're not going to do anything until we see what the other departments within the organization are doing. There's nothing wrong with that to do that. Then, you know, that's what the military does. Um, they will actually have a strategy that we're not going to move until the enemy actually moves. And that's when we will we'll have our position set up. So why you know, do you need an IT SharePoint strategy? You, you'll often hear this in, in IT, saying, people saying we need to be more strategic in our IT spending. Okay. The key thing is that we've all seen this pinwheel in, on, on, on SharePoint presentations. I think it's actually um, impossible to do a Microsoft presentation on SharePoint without having this pinwheel slide. The reality is most people in most organizations are really just using the document management. When it comes to things like web services, workflow, info path, understanding the UI ribbon, SharePoint mobile, blogs, wikis, this is the whole doc, my sites um, and 2.0 activity, people know it's there but are not using it. And remember, knowing makes no difference. We all know how to lose weight, but that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you lose weight. It's all about taking decisive actions. If anything, you could sort of describe this as almost like going to Coney Island and looking at the Polar Bear Club, and you've got some people who are dipping their toes in the water, some people are up to their shins, and some people are actually swimming, swimming in, the, in the hole in the water. And so that's kind of like where you need to see where you are. A lot of organizations are just dipping their toes 
even though they've spent the money and, in, and they've invested a lot of money in the SharePoint technology in their organization. And they know it can do more, but the question is how, and that's where you have the IT strategy. So to have a strategy, you really need to have some kind of a strategy workshop to bring folks together. Usually they should be sponsored by the executive sponsor, the CIO, the CTO, um, who's actually spent the money on the SharePoint, and bring certain parties together at a minimum. People bring in like a business um, executives, uh, IT infrastructure and application development. So people in the business, um, th that might be the business engagement manager who actually knows um, the business processes, knows the pain points, and also knows somewhat about what I your IT can provide. IT infrastructure, that's important as well because we all know SharePoint doesn't just sort of like, um, fit into into your you know, your Active Directory or your Exchange. It's tentacles to like go deep into these technologies. So if you've got multiple, if you've got um, Active Directories which need to be looked at or restructured, then the IT infrastructure need to need to know this. And of course, your application development folks need to be in, involved. Now, this meeting doesn't need to have the developers or the tech support in there, but they need to have someone who's actually make someone of influence who can make those decisions. So by having this workshop, and this could be an afternoon, it could be two days, depending on how big your organization is, or it could be a series of lunches. But the key thing, it shouldn't be just IT thinking, well, we think we know what the business know, does. And by having these three parties, then they actually have inputs. And the idea behind this workshop is that people that you can then identify, well, this is where we're going to go with SharePoint, and this is when. So where you would probably start, at the end of that workshop, you will define like a roadmap and break it into phases. So this is a, a, a roadmap. So we had the workshop July the 11th, and we identified the projects. We we're going to migrate our internet migration and asset library. We're developing a project management workbench, implement SharePoint, and then we're going to do NewsGator. And then, of course, we have the governance. Notice that governance plan goes across all the phases. It doesn't necessarily need to be continuously ongoing, but you notice it's built upon. And then we're looking at our adoption here. So we're saying, right, with the adoption, we're just going to do the end user training essentials, one, two. And then after phase two, we're going to extend the training. And stage phase four, we're actually going to then extend the training more. And then with the organization, we're going to say, well, like, we're going to work with our business, existing business units, which are kind of like using SharePoint a little bit to a degree. And then we're going to have like the APAC um, region and then the market data region. And then we, basically at the phase two, we're then going to start developing SharePoint. So it's going enterprise. So this phase two here is a stabilized. And then we're actually going to go for the whole enterprise. And then we're going to start, start turning the volume up and start really engaging in, that, in the business. So if we look at this with IT, they're going to have to support this. But also you look at the infrastructure. Notice we're not doing any .NET development until, until the phase four. So therefore, we don't need actually a development environment. Okay, so therefore, the health check, we're doing that as the first thing to make sure it's been installed correctly. So for phase two and phase three, we only have a QA and a production environment. So by having this, you've got an idea of like where the business is actually going to go with SharePoint, and the business has agreed upon this. So by doing this, you can actually identify the value. Now, I'm going to talk about, well, how do you actually understand what we put in phase two, phase three, and phase four? But by having a chart like this, the, the management can sign off and say, look, at these t time frames, this is what we're actually going to do. Because if you don't do this, you firstly, your project, your SharePoint initiative is going to be somewhat under the radar. And sooner or later, people are going to say, look, well, why are we actually spending this money on SharePoint? Because it's not really hitting big business value. It's, business value and departments are not, aren't really using it that much. So by doing this and communicating this to the business units, you can actually see what's occurring and when it's occurring. So it's the phase two, phase three, and then phase four. Okay. So how do you actually identify, well, what are we actually going to be bringing into the different phases? There's three tools I suggest you use, a business rating register, a gap analysis, and a SWOT analysis. Okay. So by doing 
those three tools and having that workshop, you can go through each of the business units and say, well, what actually projects can I actually put into SharePoint? And remember, some of the projects don't even need to be in SharePoint. Uh, okay, so therefore, by identifying a process, so perhaps an onboarding, an onboarding process, can that be done in SharePoint? Quantify the business value. Again, if you're only onboarding three employees a year, it's probably not worth spending a month building an onboarding application. So probably let's not do that in SharePoint. However, if you're actually therefore doing an onboarding, if your company is growing and it's hiring five employees a month, an onboarding application probably will be pretty good in SharePoint and it will provide value. So identify those business units <coughs> and go through some of their business processes. Now, of course, you don't actually necessarily need to be in HR, go to HR and go through every single process. The idea is to prioritize. So I identify the processes in HR, finance, IT, operations, sales, and procurement, and prioritize those, those operations and see what can then go into SharePoint. <coughs> Excuse me. And look at the senior executives. And this is how you can prioritize. And this is the ratings register. So here we were looking at applications. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice I have my business impact. So the items in green we've identified, you know what? Yeah, these could be done in SharePoint, but we've already got applications to do this. And we're not going to put them in SharePoint. If you have a, a timesheet system that works fine, why put it in SharePoint um, when you've got something that already works? But we have an onboarding process, policy documents, and review documents, performance management. <clears throat> These are the functionality, and we can actually identify the business impact and also identify the SharePoint functionality. So something like a skill set finder, that's actually out of the box. should be quite easy to do. Perhaps like this onboarding, um, it requires info path workflow, but it might be a, a high impact, but it requires custom development. Do we want to be doing custom development in our fir first couple of phase phases? Maybe not, maybe not, maybe we should. So now we've actually identified this. And notice this is the application for HR. And then when we've gone through all of the departments, we can summarize this with a gap analysis. Okay, so that gap analysis identify what you actually currently have with your SharePoint environment. So you've probably installed SharePoint and you've got an environment that, that works, kind of. You know, we don't really know where it really works, but you know, it's, it's, it's there. Is it being backed up? We need to find that out. There's no support procedure. So therefore, if somebody has a problem with SharePoint, how do they, we support them? How do we train the users? Bit of a wild west because we've got no governance and we're only using out of the box. And then the people who are actually using SharePoint are really the administrators and a couple of individual pet project initiatives. And it's very self-service and departmental. And our processes are just document management and we really want to get training, get traction. So that's clearly what we are. But what we really want to do is declare the future. Okay, so therefore, that's the future. That's going to be the end of all the phases. Something which is con correctly scaled and architected where we have third-party web parts um, um, deployed custom development, the people using this is a, 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 we actually have a SharePoint administrator, not a part-time administrator who's, a, who's an exchange administrator and a network guy. We also have someone who's perhaps a SharePoint business engagement manager who's listening to the business for those needs. Now again, that role could already exist with your business engagement manager, but he's just been re-skilled with the SharePoint um, skills. And then perhaps every sort of like, um, month you have like a SharePoint brown bag session training where somebody's shown you some SharePoint functionality within your organization that one department's done, that other department has done. And if you're working for a large company, you may want to have like a SharePoint captain at each location. This is like the SharePoint power user. You know, traditionally, this could be like the guy who knows how to do the macros in Excel and, uh, and Word. So that's like a really good candidate to bring on board to bring into the SharePoint world. So you notice the, what we currently had was like a self-service model, which was a bit of a wild west, and that's great for getting traction, but you're, you're not really going to get mission critical applications. So you're going to reach a point to say, you know what, we want a managed model. 
Okay, now that managed model, obviously probably mission critical application, something that IT needs to actually be able to support and understand. And that also requires more, more effort on everybody. And then we can start moving, so we say, these bit boutique applications into the SharePoint world. The whole win with SharePoint is that it's that platform, that environment, so we don't, um, for other applications, so we're not having like a conference room booking system, which is one custom .NET application. We're not having a, a, a team calendar in one environment and another business process in another environment. We're bringing this into the SharePoint world. Now, management love this because people will sooner or later ask, well, look, why are we spending all this money on SharePoint? And you can say, look, this is what we've got, and this is the future we want to declare. And by doing this, this provides the business value. So I've shown you the risk register of identifying the, the priority of all applications you can do within SharePoint. And now we're actually done the gap analysis. Okay, and then now we're doing the SWOT analysis. Uh, and now management love this because here we can say, look, this is where we are, and this is what our strengths are within the organization. We have some technology expertise, so maybe we need to hire somebody. We're using a lot of Microsoft complementary products like Exchange and SQL and Active Directory. We have Microsoft Enterprise licenses. And by using SharePoint, these are the strengths we actually can bring to the organization, a reduction of third-party applications. If we look at the opportunities that SharePoint can provide, that richer user experience of the workday, perhaps less emails, more productive, an easier environment to support. If people have got one single sign-on into, in, you know, into their PC and that brings them into the SharePoint world, the Exchange world, then you know what? It's a lot less um, supporting of, uh, for users. And also there's a, re a reduction in rogue business applications. You know, every organization has got their fo financial forecasting model an Excel spreadsheet saved on somebody's desktop which gets emailed around. Remember, email is the graveyard of information. By having this perhaps in SharePoint, firstly it's backed up and we know where it is. But also you might say, you know what, this is an application that can be webinized in SharePoint. Our current weaknesses are, uh, by deploying SharePoint, is that you know what, not everyone's on SharePoint 2010, it's not always on Office 2010. And also, we don't have the ability to actually support a live environment, and there's no training material. The threat to bring in SharePoint to this are scalability and planning, and how we're actually going to do this, internal support, do we actually have a fully defined governance plan, adoption and business engagement issues. So by defining <coughs> this SWOT analysis, we can start to identify what we need to do, and when we need to do it, and why we need to do this. Because ultimately, we need to be putting the sources into this SharePoint initiative. So let's fast forward six months. Uh, we had that like kickoff meeting where we met with the IT and infrastructure and the um, app development. We identified where this, where we were going to go, what projects we were going to do first. We presented that to management. They signed off on this. We told them how much the budget was going to occur, going to cost. They coughed a bit, they choked a bit, but they signed off on this. We fast forward six months. You're in that meeting with the other management, and then you can say, look, remember that roadmap which we defined, which would actually bring SharePoint into the organization. So we met last year. Okay, these are the phases that we defined, and this is the impact we agreed on by the business. This is actually what we've achieved to date. And, to date. and these are the items which were actually still in progress or are incomplete. So suddenly, after six months, there's visibility, okay, this is what we're actually doing with the SharePoint. It's not just, it's not just lingering, lingering around. This is the impact it's actually having on the business. People probably may know this, but when you're in the management meetings, having a simple slide like this, they can see where it's going and, what the ne and where it's been and what the next steps are. And so executives love these tools, uh, absolutely, because it's easy to use and they understand it. Okay, and they can just glance at the information and then they can make decisions. Okay. So implementation and IT strategy must do, must support the corporate strategy. So if the CIO reports into um, the CFO, generally the IT strategy is all about cutting costs. 
if the CIO or CTO reports into the CEO, it's about growth of the organization. Okay, so the idea is for the IT strategy mapping onto the corporate strategy, not you reinventing a, um, an IT, a rogue IT strategy. Well-defined milestones. You notice that the phase is broken down so you can review at those phases. Identify dependencies. <clears throat> if we need to get a, a, a server farm or, you know what, we're waiting for a virtualized environment, these are big things which are not discussed in generally in SharePoint meetings, but they are actually required for you guys to get your SharePoint work done. And factor in a phase two of projects. Remember, there's nothing worse than having a project, a SharePoint project uh, delivered to an organization or a business unit. And of course, all end users don't really quite know what they want. They ask for things they don't necessarily need. And then they realize what, they, what they're getting is a bit different to how they work. Factor in a phase two to just address and prioritize some quick wins is because at the end of the day, for SharePoint to grow virally, <coughs> you need to have good support, good support structure, good store, a good vocal people in the organization. <coughs> Excuse me, as I cough there. And also acknowledge fa failures as well. Um, these will actually occur, and if you, if you do stuff in an organization, in a department, acknowledge, you know what, this didn't quite work as well as it should. This is what we actually learned. And, I, and that will actually give you a lot of respect and a listening within an organization for people to understand that you totally get that it didn't work as well as it should, and this is what you learned. I put a brain on this slide because I've noticed that people generally take notes when you put brains on slides. So this is an important slide. <coughs> so a quick question here. Who actually has like an IT strategy? So we can unmute the phones or we can use the chat. Um, Who's it? Okay, great. People are answering questions? I can't Any? see. You want them to respond? Who actually has an yeah. IT strategy? Yes. Okay. Can anyone just sort of respond <coughs> real quickly in the, uh, in the chat window if you have an IT strategy? How about if you do have one, you can re reply, and if you don't, um, just leave it empty. You pick. You pick. <laughs> Don't all do this all at once. Not particularly. Once it not particularly, and I guess that's that's pretty much it. I don't think that anyone really has, at least if someone would have raised their hand if they would say yes. We do. Okay, here goes one. We do, but Lord knows that it needs work. That's almost <laughs> like a governance policy, isn't it? It's always in progress. It's always like a massive science project. <coughs> well, Kevin seems to be a star here. Can I take the Fifth Amendment here? That's a typical Jeff response, I must admit. This matches what we've been doing, but the tools such as SWOT analysis is something we need to develop. Mm. <coughs> okay, so we've got some... So, Johnny, just a quick question here, not to put you on the spot. You said it needs work. What, what's working about it and what's not working about it? Who is that? I'll unmute him. Johnny? Okay, Johnny. Okay. Johnny, are you there? I think what we have from Microsoft is a great start. Um, one question, actually. Uh, do you know how much CGS, CGS actually focuses on uh, AEC? Uh, Oh, I think uh, Johnny might be talking to someone else. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that was him. Yeah. You just see, the more people get involved, the more it seems to change. But well, that's very true, and that's why you need to be pri prioritize this. Um, so, look, yeah, this is what we're doing for the first six, three months, and the next six six months and we can look at it then and you know what if you need if, you, if it requires to be looked at before maybe we need to look reprioritize our projects or get more resources but by having that kind of a conversation 
you can actually then get have the ability to actually prioritize and say, well, look, where exactly is the business value here? Okay, and then do we need this? You know, so that's you know, so I totally get that. That the more people you have, the more it changes. Well, when you say changes, are you saying like like positive that it's, it's starting to move into a, a different direction, or or the goals change? Uh, well, let me speak to the majority. Though quite often, you know, you've deployed something for say the sales folks and marketing. The marketing are saying, well, what about this? Well, yeah, what what about that? And what about this? Can we do this? Can we do that? And sometimes it sometimes that the process already exists with another application or you know what we haven't got to that we're in the SharePoint world sometimes people try and like boil the ocean with SharePoint mm -hmm. um, and the reality is let's start, start small and scale fast and get some quick wins and then identify well where exactly is the business value what is the big pain point here because what you really want to try and do is get you know you know, get Gets we say processes optimized in SharePoint, which provides the biggest win. Yeah, okay, perhaps not just politically, but also financially as well. Uh, Paul has a uh, question. Oh wait, wait, hold on. I think Johnny. Let's let's continue with Johnny first. He's, okay. Um, yeah. I yeah. So I said our problem is that in IT we've developed strategic needs, but management is demanding solutions, but it's disinterested in the immediate steps that require them to commit to discussions to inform us. <clears throat> so I think there's a bit of a disconnect here within IT and management. And this is where what you need um, is that, that SharePoint strategy, you should probably meet like once a month to see where you are or every other month to identify, you know, this is what we've done, this is what we're doing, these are the problems, and that could be part of like a SharePoint meeting in general, perhaps discussing things like governance, other initiatives, uh, you know, like a, perhaps a SharePoint steering committee. But to me, from what I'm hearing, from reading there, there's a bit of a disconnect. Right. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask the group, I, I, I think you should be able to unmute yourself. Um, can you, can everyone unmute yourself? Because you can ask your questions live over the phone. Uh, Paul, uh, you had a question, right? I yeah. Hey, Peter. Um, Hi, Paul. Hey. Uh, I guess I have a kind of general question, and I, if you want to answer this later or if now is appropriate, just let me know. But I'm mm -hmm. probably in a similar position to you. I don't have an IT strategy because I'm I, I'm a service provider, but so I'm usually more in the position of convincing people that they need to do something like this. Mm -hmm. And I what I'm I don't think anybody any reasonable IT manager or CT or strategist would look at this and say no, I don't think this makes sense. Everybody would agree this makes sense and, and it's really well put together, but I imagine that when you present it, you get some pushback based on budget and staffing constraints and stuff like that. And I kind of have two questions that are maybe related. And, and one, do you, do you see a correlation between how much a company has invested in the product and how seriously they take this? So maybe if they purchase enterprise versus foundation, are they more like to, to, uh, to roll up their sleeves and do this work? And then Sort of similar question is, is there a profile of company that you find that is more receptive to this? So like a big company with lots of governance versus, a, you know, a smaller company. Uh, and, and then lastly, if, do you have strategies for kind of like addressing those different profiles? If, if, if there are those different profiles, you have stra different strategies and ways that you'll kind of like make an argument to them. Okay, so you also, there's a couple of questions here. So uh, I'll try and go through the... Uh, the, the questions. <clears throat> you, firstly, you, you, if you're going to deploy SharePoint, the reality is you are going to spend money on this on this product. And the, the name of the game is to try and get return on investment. Um, so yes, you are going to get kicked back, but everyone's like knows that we need to spend money. What I'm really doing with this strategy session is really just declaring, you know what, this is what we're going to do, and this is when we're going to do this. Now every CIO, you know, um, <clears throat> they have to ask their CFO for budget. And you know, and there's probably some kind of a justification about like, well, why are we actually spending this money? So by doing like an exercise like this, you can say, well, this is why we're spending this money, um, and you know, and this is really what our initiatives are going to be. And it's really kind of like taking a step back and saying, look, what are we actually doing with this technology? And I've actually been on one client site, 
and they had foundation and they were just using it for like your bit of document management but the reality is they were very committed to the network drive and they were very committed to emailing attachments and they weren't willing to change and I said well why are you why why have you got this thing why have you got this thing installed and they said well look you know we got it for free and so basically tinkering with the idea and that's what they and that's really what they wanted to do nothing wrong with that but it doesn't provide a great deal of value and I'm like, so by doing this, you really are declaring this is what you've got, and this is where you actually want to go. Okay, and that's going to that is going to mean you're going to spend money initially. Initially, and you know what, you know, like that, you know, you might not see that investment until three months, four months, and that's where SharePoint is a bit difficult to define that return on investment. Like, how do you define the ability to um, <coughs> not? Not grow, you know, the, the ability of not emailing out attachments. It's a bit difficult to put a quantitative effort to that. Well, things like an accounting system is well defined. You can see, you know, what we can actually identify our um, our customers who are not paying for paying, uh, and we can identify our top ten um, product lines. Very definable, good bottom line impact. With SharePoint, it can be soft. That's why by doing something like this, you're identifying. You know, say, you know I, uh, you're identifying business processes, which are, which map onto where the company's going. So if you know, if the company require, you know, it requires a global workforce, global access to information, because they're expanding globally. That's the global corporate initiative. SharePoint is a good tool for this. Now, like I said, it's going to require spending money. So <clears throat> companies where I wouldn't say where SharePoint doesn't work but it can be a bit of a challenge. It's where, at the end of the day, if you've got like three or four employees, um, ch chances are you don't have complex business processes. Okay, and you're probably just looking at something to say share the information at best, and you might want to just sort of like use a SharePoint hosted environment. That's what, you know, that's what I'd recommend. And of course, you probably don't need a strategy because a small business is probably not even thinking beyond three months or six months. It's probably thinking month to month. So that's kind of like, so at the end of the day, a big company, it works better because they've also got, they probably invested in the SharePoint, they also have an IT department, and they're also doing a lot of this, but perhaps in a more of an informal way. Um, they're probably having some kind of, a, at, the end of the, at the end of every year, IT departments submit their projects and their proposals for the following year's budget. So they're kind of like doing that already. But if you did something with SharePoint like this, identify whether well, this is going to be the big ticket win wins, and then you promote that to the CFO or the CEO for the budget for next year. It increases your chance of getting that money because of the fact you can you've identified the business value. Does that answer your question or your questions? <clears throat> I, I, we might have lost Paul for a second. Okay. But, um, Laura, Laura Rogers. Okay. I haven't. Yeah. Hi, I'm here. Oh, Laura, did you have something to say? No, I just, uh, he was asking if everybody could talk a few minutes ago, and I was just noting that I was on <coughs> mute, so I, I've been listening. <laughs> okay, uh, good to hear from you. Hi. Hi. Okay, uh, Paul, Paul coming, coming back? Okay, so that's the um, IT strategy. Okay, now science is all going wrong. Basically, it's a classic case where there's communication, and that's when there's a lack of meetings. <clears throat> so that's why I recommend periodically that that SharePoint steering committee meets and just identifies like this is what we committed ourselves to, and if it hasn't worked out, recommit to those timelines. Or there's weather report meetings where people are saying everything's working fine, and the and, and it's absolutely not. Also, that out-of-date progress reports where people are just looking at, that people think at the Active Directory has been redone or the virtualized environment is now operational and it's actually not. So, of course, you're making SharePoint decisions based on um, dependent on the technologies within the organization. Training as well. Um, I always somewhat joke with uh, companies that when you get SharePoint, do not use the um, pilot group as a sales force. Don't get them because sales folks, they generally are 
um, short attention spans, they're not at their desk a lot, they're out on the road, and also if there's a problem with the business, with that business process, and it starts to hit sales, then of course it generally gets escalated because to the CEO because people's commissions and ultimately revenue starts getting hit. So I recommend start with a easy win business unit first with SharePoint and get familiar and see what the culture's like and then build it out from there. Other challenges are lack of help and insight into the business process. What is this little value? This is the classic case where IT thinks it knows how the business works. So that's why they need to be involved. Budget and sponsor. This is the whole, this is where the challenge is, particularly in this economy. If you have no budget, there's no project or there's budget cuts, that's when you're going to get a problem. Also a, a sponsor, generally somebody like a CIO or a CTO, he's like the sponsor and they generally start off SharePoint as like a little internal under the radar project in IT. What, you, what needs to occur is that you need to declare that this is, if this is going to become a mission critical application, you need to declare that and start speaking with the business and so saying, look, this is going to cost money, but this is the value. And that's the whole, and that's the whole thing with leadership as well, where, where somebody um, hasn't actually so I thought about the whole process and just throwing out the technology to the business. And then there's poor planning as well. Um, no deployment due to complex dependencies, as we talked about with a, a, a virtualized environment or bad prioritization as well. Let's not try and start, we may have developers on staff, but let's perhaps not start off with um, uh, the mother of all .NET developments with SharePoint. Why don't we start off with the out of the box SharePoint functionality and learn what we've got before we start building out new functionality. So quickly to summarize, we talked about SharePoint <coughs> statistics and IT strategy in general, why you need it, strategy tools, a business impact register, gap analysis, SWOT analysis, SharePoint must, signs it's all going wrong. So final word, um, often I like go to conferences and um, you know, I hear Microsoft speak or perhaps IBM and I'll usually end up with the presentation with some kind of inspirational quote like, you know, in IT the only constant is change. The reality is that's actually not true. What I can tell you now is that the more things change, the more things stay the same. And that's even more so with products like SharePoint. You're always going to need training. You're always going to need management support. You're always going to need to have business value. You're always going to have to have return on investment, end user support and governance. And that's not just with SharePoint. That's really with anything. So any questions or any further questions? Well, um, I wanted to bring back uh, Johnny's question, which was when he said, um, it's a two-edged sword. The more people learn about SharePoint, the more they want to do. And it becomes a battle between technolo technological wants and needs and fiscal responsibility. It's really well, that's where you, but, well, that's really where you need to have dialogue and, I, and use those tools to identify, you know, let's, let's say we've got limited resources. Why can't we prioritize? Got it. <laughs> uh, Jeff says you also need some guidance from above. Well, that's where you need to have the leadership as well. The guidance from above, what you mean like very much above. <laughs> How high are we going? Like we're talking about like <laughs> God? <laughs> well, I, I, did actually, I did actually deploy SharePoint for a not-for-profit. And all I can say is that you don't make much money, but it does increase your chances of getting to heaven. <laughs> I did a, a web. I did a SharePoint site for some nuns one time. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I did training at a, at a like a Catholic, for a bunch of Catholic bishops. SharePoint training. Talk mm. about afraid of change. <laughs> bunch of old men. I see. <laughs> That's funny. It's interesting the the difference in audiences and how you have to talk to them about how they're doing things compared to how, the way they do them now. And, and, and also things like, you know, if your company is like an entrepreneurial and it's fast startup, policies and procedures are not in place, you're going to have a nightmare mapping a business process to policies that are constantly changing. 
not just with SharePoint, with anything. Uh, and, and some companies are just very committed to being very chaotic, and they're quite happy to live with people getting 300 emails a day. <laughs> you know, and they may say they want change, but it really takes a complete disaster, like they lose business, for them to realize, you know what, we need to step back. 